Welcome to part 9 of our tutorial series on how to apply custom visual designs in MOS. In this part, I'll discuss some tips for styling the main navigation control in MOS. The menu control in MOS is basically the same as the menu control in .NET, and it may be styled as such, but I prefer to use CSS to control the styling of the menu. When you're working with the .NET menu, you'll see references to static item properties and dynamic item properties. Static refers to the root navigation items, and dynamic refers to the flyout navigation items, or sublinks. In this example, these are the static menu items, and these are the dynamic menu items. In our base master page, Imagination included the SharePoint ASP menu control. Again, this is similar to an ASP.NET menu control. In our base master page, we assign custom classes to the static and dynamic menu items in the nav control. As a placeholder, we name these classes with a prefix client underscore. To apply classes from your custom CSS, change the class names in the master page code to reflect your project code prefix. In the example shown here, the code is emag underscore. This would correspond to matching class names in the custom CSS file. So let's go ahead and make that change to our demo website. I'm going to open our demo master page. It's going to ask me if I want to check it out, and I'll say yes. And then I'm going to look for our navigation control, which is right here at the comment top navigation. And here we can see SharePoint ASP menu. And right here we can see the placeholder styles, or placeholder classes that have been applied to the static menu items and the dynamic menu items. So I'm going to replace the word client with our prefix, which is DEMO. And then I'll save the changes. Normally I would then add the same classes to my custom CSS file and start styling the navigation as needed. But in this case for the demo, I've already added these classes to my CSS file. Let's take a look at it in the style library. Here are my navigation classes, and you can see that they all start with the DEMO prefix that we applied in the master page. So let's take a look at the website to see how the navigation looks now. I'm going to refresh the page, and here we can see that the navigation looks much, much better now. The flyout menus could still use a little bit of an adjustment here, so I'm going to go back to the master page, and I'm going to change the dynamic vertical offset setting here, and I'm going to try 3. I save my change. And then let's look at the website again. Refresh the page. Still off by a pixel, so I'm going to go back. Let's try 2. Save the change again. Refresh the page again. And now the vertical alignment is a little better. It's actually lining up with the bottom of the navigation here. So sometimes a few adjustments will be made. And again, I'm normally doing all this styling after the fact. But for the demo, a lot of my styles are already in our CSS file. Here are a few tips for styling the MOS navigation. In MOS as well as .NET, the ASP menu control renders navigation as many, many nested tables. The same class name will be applied to different elements, such as table, TR, TD, and even the anchor tags. So here's an example of code rendered by MOS, where the same class name has been applied to the table tag, and inside there the anchor tag has that same class name. Therefore, you might need to pinpoint the HTML element in your custom style sheet when you use these class names. 
For example, you may need to style the table tag differently than the anchor tag when they both use the same class name. If you would like to have a rollover effect, it is useful to add a display block property to the appropriate anchor tag. This overrides the inline behavior of the anchor tag and allows you to style it as a block element with paddings and margins and all that good stuff. You can use these same concepts to style the quick launch menu in Moss. Here's an example of a default quick launch menu. And here's a quick launch menu that we styled with custom CSS. That concludes part nine of our tutorial series. Over the course of this series, we have applied a custom visual design to Moss by creating a custom master page, a custom page layout, and applying a custom CSS file. Part 10 of this series will discuss a few tips for applying CSS variations in Moss.